Take your Bibles, turn to Ephesians. I am, this morning, I feel good. I uh, feel upbeat. Cracking some good jokes. And that tells me that I probably should not preach. Because I'm too much in the way. I'm too much in the way. And I mean that. Um, to me, this, this is one of the most important... I mean, he put, says put on the whole armor of God here. But if I were to, if I were to pick one of these to sort of be more prominent than the others. Again, it's hard. You have to put them all on. But the shield of faith, it really stands out to me. Out of this whole list here, we have, we've, we've dealt with um, loins girt about with truth, breast, uh, breastplate of righteousness, feet shod, preparation of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, Helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, and praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. That's actually, I believe, part of it. The helmet of salvation, when I get to that, which probably be next week, you can't be defended. You cannot defend spirits. You cannot keep them off of you if you are not saved. If you are not saved, you will never, you will never win, ever. They will beat you and they will destroy you because you do not have the blessing and the protection of Jesus Almighty on you. You cannot expect to even merit the graces of God without salvation. Uh, even though he gives them, God gives grace to everybody. People are alive. All of it, The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. People around the world that are lost and miserable, wretched sinners, eat well in this world, live well financially. And all of that is by the grace of God. But when it comes to the spiritual attacks, not necessarily against your flesh, against your soul, you are not going to make it without the helmet of salvation. You'll not make it being unsaved. But that shield of faith, it stands out to me, not only because of what I read in the scriptures, but because of what I have seen and know of my life and the things that I have dealt with, the things that I have suffered, the things I have gone through, the things that I have done. And I, there was a day that I will not forget as long as I live. It was a day in which God's Word, having been in church most of my life, saved when I was nine, and I do believe that, uh, worked under a good pastor, learned ministry from him, three years of Bible college, pastor to small town church, country church, laid back, had a great time there, the Lord blessed. But all of that, I almost lost it all. And one day, this Bible became my very best friend ever. And it's the day I've mentioned it before. I've pointed to verses. I'd be reading verses and I would point to them and I would look up to heaven, tears in my eyes and say, God, you have to do this because you don't lie. And God, if you don't do this, I'm dead. I'm dead in the water. There's been other days when I've done similar things, but that particular day. The Bible, for the very first time, I think, really, in my life, it became everything. Everything. 
And I, I talk about, in the Bible, the theme of death, burial, resurrection. Life, death, resurrection. You see it in Joseph. You see it in Christ. You see it in Paul's life. Paul had to die to the old guy that he was. And he was baptized. And he, but he was saved on his road to Damascus. Baptized later. But everything in his old life went away. And everything became brand new to him. He was on his way to kill Christians. Then he became one. And everything about his life then revolved around one single thing. And that is this book. And him writing the majority of our New Testament was written by the hand or given by the voice of the Apostle Paul, written by other hands, but came from the heart, the Apostle Paul, by way of the Holy Spirit. That day changed his life. And everything about him after that became about the word of God and our belief in it. How are we saved? How are we saved? By faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. Can you have the grace without faith? The Bible says no. No, absolutely not. You cannot be saved without believing what God said. You call God a liar, you're, listen, I wouldn't do it if I were you. I just wouldn't do it. I've done it. I'm telling you, don't do it. Don't call God a liar. Don't disbelieve anything he said in his word. And coming from that Bible college background, where I was taught, this ain't right, this ain't translated right, this is all messed up. There's a, there's a textual variant here. Used to have a professor say that all the time. There's a textual variant here. He used to joy in finding mistakes in his Bible. This is wrong. That's not right. That's, that's, that contradicts itself over here. You read something in 1 Kings, it's, it's contradicted in 2 Chronicles. So that we know the Bible's wrong. We know that. Paul didn't, we know it's, it wasn't all preserved. We found better manuscripts. We've got better translations. All that junk that I was taught to believe threw it out the window one day. Gone. Every bit of it gone. And that one day God came in and said, Mike, this book is right. And you know it is. And that's all he said. That was it. And I surrendered immediately to it. And... From that day, I never look back. Because if you look at this idea in the Bible, once God reconfirms something in you with a double witness, what is the, how is it that we accept a doctrine? Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, right? So if, a guy, if we see something in one place in the Bible, says one thing, we see it in another place in the Bible, says the same thing, then we know it's true. We know it's two witnesses. We believe it. And that's what God did in me was gave me a second witness to this one authorized 1611 King James version of the Bible is right. You can believe it's wrong if you want to. I refuse because every time I even think, well, maybe it's wrong. I think, well, what does the Bible say? Does the Bible say it's ever wrong? No, it's never wrong. Never. What kind of shield do you have if it's not of faith? And when, now, when people say faith nowadays, what does that mean? Oh, they're people of faith. But what does that mean? That just means they believe something. And nine times out of ten, it's something stupid. Oh, they're people of faith. And the way they apply that now, that could belong to Muslims, Christians, Jews, Buddhists, Universalists, Taoists. It could belong to Hindus. It could belong to anybody. They're a person of faith. But if it's faith in the wrong thing, it's wrong. And it won't get them anywhere. It'll, they'll still die and go to the same hell. The devil has a thousand faces. God only has one. You believe that? See, I, I don't know how to preach this to you. Because what I, 
what I want to ask you is, tell me something you don't believe. Tell me something you don't believe is possible. Tell me something that's, I don't know, it's just, I sat for hours last night just trying to think on this and how to get it across to you. Here's, here's what I got in my mind. Just kind of roll with me here. Have patience with me. Y'all didn't just get here to go home, did you? I know John's going to say it. Turn to um, turn to 2 Thessalonians 2. You believe in the supernatural. Now let's get weird for a minute. You mind? See, he, I know he's going to like it. That's my buddy. Excuse me for a minute. <laughs> Ghosts. Spirits. Haunted houses, haunted places, devils, devil possession. Have I said anything that's not true yet? Ghosts are spirits, but not spirits of dead people. So don't even ask me that. I don't believe that. They're familiar spirits. They are what the Bible says. They look, that spirit that came up out of the ground was not Samuel. God said it three times. It wasn't Samuel. It was a familiar spirit. He went looking for a familiar spirit and got a familiar spirit. And it wasn't Samuel because God said, I'm not speaking to Saul by prophet anymore. So it wasn't Samuel. It was a, what some people would call a ghost, a haunt, a geist, a spirit, familiar spirit, whatever. But it was not the dead Samuel coming up out of hell to speak to Saul, because God, number one, don't do that. He don't. Number two, God already said, I'm not speaking to Saul ever again. So it wasn't from God. It was a ghost, a spirit, a devil, a familiar spirit, an evil spirit, an evil angel, a fallen angel, Whatever, an alien, th that word in the way it's used in our King James 1611 Bible applies to spirits. They are strangers, aliens from this world. They do not belong here and yet they're here. Now, what I'm going to tell you is there is a whole bunch of stuff fixing to pop out. And I mean weird Wild, wacky stuff. Thank you. Glad I got an amen. I got a yeah. I got a yeah. Stuff that's going to blow people's minds. The Bible calls them lying signs and wonders. You can call them whatever you want. This is what the Bible calls them. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. It's already been going on. We in America have lived this civilized, Americanized Christianity for so long that most churches do not deal with and have not ever dealt with spiritual encounters, spiritual things, devil possessions, or any such like because the mindset of most Americans is more toward the scientific than it is the supernatural. And we've adopted that into Christianity to where, I get, listen, I've been to, Ken, I've been to a third world country there are evil spirits everywhere over there. They're everywhere. And usually, in many cases, out in the open. You can see them in people. You got, I've, talked to, I've had missionary friends that I've talked to who have been overseas, been to Brazil, that's been to other places, ministered there. I had a friend that his mom and dad, he grew up in a missionary family in Brazil. He said, we saw it all the time. He said, it'd be nothing for us to be having church and somebody come in the church, sit there for a while, and all of a sudden just start going berserk in the whole church. And we had to figure out whether or not they had a devil in them or not. So we, they, they ran through 1 John, uh, 1 John 1, 7. 
because of the blood of Jesus. It's in that verse. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleansed. And they would try to have this person read 1 John 1, 7. And if they couldn't read it, a lot of times, amazingly, Sister Alphia, they wouldn't even be able to see that verse in the Bible because it had the blood of Jesus in it. And they said, well, we got somebody that's got a devil here. They'd ask him, do you want to be free, set free from this? Nine times out of ten, they'd just leave. But they dealt with that all the time over there. How many times that happened here? It has. You just didn't know it. You didn't see it. That's what I'm getting at. The haints are still here. They just hiding better. And we don't know how to spot them. We don't know how to recognize them. We don't know. We, we don't think of their existence. But they're the ones that's been beating you up every day. They're the ones that when you go to somebody's house and you just don't feel like being there. There's something going on in the spirit world. And your spirit is in communion with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's saying, stand strong, stand strong. But there's devils all around you screaming at your spirit going, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Because they do not like you there. I've been there. Raise your hand. If you've ever, if you've ever experienced that, raise your hand. Now, look around you, people. You got a bunch of weirdos and fanatics you're sitting in church with. And I'm telling you, stuff is going to fall down from the sky. Stuff is going to shoot up from the ground. The moon is going to turn. Now, let me just ask you about how you believe your Bible. Did you ever read the verse? Raise your hand if you read the verse where the Bible says the moon was going to turn red. No, you did not. I caught you. I set you up and I knew I was doing it. Ed's laughing. He's, he gets it. Did you ever read the verse where your Bible said the moon was going to turn red? No. It does not say that, does it? What does it say? How is that even possible? You don't know either. But if God said it, does God lie? Does God, ex does he stretch the truth? Does he exaggerate? Does God not speak plainly? Does that beast not have seven heads? Does he not have ten horns? Did not the wheels that Ezekiel saw have eyes all in them? Was not the spirit of the living creature in those wheels? I mean, I could go on this all day long and tell you of the supernatural things that are in your Bible that I've learned over the years. Things that I grew up reading books out of the library and asked God, what is this? And now that, now that I believe this, I can find out what it is. I got the encyclopedia right here in front of me. Every spirit... Every supernatural thing that has happened or will happen in this world is in this book or it's not going to happen. Am I catching you yet? I had it in my mind I was going to hand out a piece of paper that had this written on it. I love Mike Hoggard no matter what he says and you'd sign and date it and hand it back to me before I preach today. Because I know... I think out there, somebody got to, and I'm telling you, some voodoo, nasty, bad, spiritual, satanic, evil, devilish things are going to start oozing out of the walls before too long. So let's keep reading this. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked, he's not talking about just commonplace wicked. He's a specific wicked thing. We know it's the Antichrist. Be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. What is that? What's the spirit of his mouth? It's that book you got in your hand. And destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with how much power? And with signs and lying wonders so i don't believe the moon is just gonna we've had red moons before 
and the Lord hadn't come back. Right? That happens at a lunar eclipse. But you know the same day that the moon turns to blood, the sun is darkened. It is not possible to have a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse on the same time, at the same place, on the same day, in the same event. It is impossible because one is blocking out the other. That's why you get either a lunar eclipse or a solar eclipse. It's not possible to have them both happen at the same time. You see what I'm saying? So your Bible does not say the moon's going to turn red. It says it's going to turn to blood. Now that raises it up a notch with me. This is not an ordinary event. This is an extraordinary, supernatural, something that we would go, what in the world is that? And if you didn't have a shield of faith in this book, you're going to lose it. You're going to say, oh, that's something that's not in, not just, that's something not even in the Bible. Well, if it's not in the Bible, oh, the Bible's wrong. Let me tell you what I have heard from every UFO speaker I've ever listened to. You know what? Every one of them has said, if we can prove that there are aliens and UFOs, Visiting this planet, every religion would be wrong. They never read this the way I read it. Because I read it and believe it. And it ain't going to fool me. I got a shield against that already. Better than a Captain America shield. Amen? Let me read. Let me keep reading. Verse 10, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of what? The truth. I want to know the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now you have to ask the question, does that, is that saying, is that speaking to you or is it speaking of somebody else? If you're not saved, it's what I said a while ago, if you don't have the helmet of salvation, you are going to be deceived on that day. Because you don't, if you don't have the helmet of salvation, you don't have the shield of faith either. Because you've got to put them all on. Amen? Then, am I right on that? If you don't have one, if you don't have the helmet of salvation on, can you have a shield of faith? Not according to the Bible. If you don't have one, you don't have the other. You're going to fall and be deceived on that day. And no amount of your smart, intelligent, scientific reasoning or anything else that you think of is going to overrule the power of Satan to deceive you. He's been pulling the wool over your eyes for years and you didn't know it. Am I right, John? Isn't that what the devil did to you for years? When you look back now at the way you lived your life before you met Jesus... He fooled you for years. And you thought you were thinking right. So now Ephesians 6. Above all, verse 16, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now I want you to think of those fiery darts. Okay. In fact, let's pray. See, this is why you should not come to Bethel Church. Because it's 12 now and I'm just now praying for the sermon. You should not be here. But I'm glad you are. Father, help me to say only what you want me to say today. God, I can hold the rest off. It doesn't matter to me. This is your pulpit. This is your, these are your people. They, they're not mine. They're just my friends. And they've come to me and I have nothing to give them. I have nothing. So would you rise and give us bread today? And Father, if there's anybody, anybody listening to me. And they're not saved. They, they cannot have faith. 
because they're not saved. They don't believe. They don't trust. They have not put their trust in you yet. And I know what it takes, Father, because you've done it to me. You forced me to trust you, and I didn't want to do it. So, Father, somebody's listening to me today. And they have, you haven't led them to the place where you forced them to trust you. God, would you do that? Because I can't. Force them to trust you. And then they'll, they'll have faith. They'll have that shield. And they won't fall for this. So deliver us, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, let me read some verses to you just to get in the scripture here. I'm going to read this very quickly. Genesis 15, 1, after these things, the word of the Lord came. So notice, now, notice in every one of these verses, he's going to attach the word of the Lord to faith and God being the shield. That's how I find this stuff. After these things, the word of the Lord came in Abraham. You know what the word of the Lord is? It's your Bible. In a vision, saying, fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Who's going to defend you? Is it you? No. God's going to defend you. By the way, when you go stand before God in judgment, aren't you going to need a good lawyer? Who's going to defend you? God is. He's Jesus. God's Jesus. Amen? First, 2 Samuel 22, 3. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield, the horn of my salvation, my high tower, my refuge, my savior. So save us from violence. Forgive me. Hang on. Because I'm not kidding you. I did not want to trust him. I did not want to trust him. Psalm 512. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous. Who's righteous? No, not one. So how do you get righteous? You put on righteousness. You put it on. Christ is our righteousness. The Lord our righteousness. With favor, what thou compass him is with a shield. You see, I learned that if you trust the Lord, instead of your own, instead of your own thinking, if you trust the Lord instead of your own thinking, He'll immediately compass you and he'll circle you so that no harm touches you. And God had to physically put me in a situation where I was forced to do that on multiple occasions. And it just... My wicked, sinful nature did not want to trust God. Psalm, one to eight, Psalm 18, Thou hast given me the shield of thy salvation. Thy right hand hath held me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Psalm 28, 7, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. See, these are some of the verses I was pointing to in the Bible and saying, God, you need to help me. Therefore, my great heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song I will praise him. That's what I told God I'd do if he helped me. And he did. Psalm 84, Behold, O God, o God, our shield, look upon the face of thine anointed. Psalm 84, 11, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace. You ever seen the backside of the moon? You ever seen a picture of the backside of the moon? You know it does not look like the front side? Did you know that it has thousands more meteor strikes on it than the face of it does? Do you understand Why? God, Chris, God put the moon up there to shield the earth from being hit by those meteors. The backside of the moon has all, think of the back of Christ. Where did he get the scourging at? His back. The backside of the moon has all the meteor strikes that were headed for the earth, but they hit the moon instead. God put the moon up there for a shield too. <laughs> Say yeah. Yeah. This Bible's right. God used this Bible to create everything that is in existence. I'm begging you, trust it. Trust it. It's true. 
Now, every word of God is pure. Do you believe that? He is a shield unto them that put their trust. Notice how he's connecting this together. Solomon. With, why is Solomon? The word of God is pure. He. Who's, who's the him? Those who put their trust in him. Who's the him? The word of God. That's why they're in the same verse together. The word of God is a him. He is a book and he's a man simultaneously. When you put your trust in one, you must put your trust in the other. And that's what it took me years to figure out. And he's a shield to them who put their trust in him. Faith, the shield of faith. Do you get what I'm saying? Romans 10, 16. For they have not obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord hath believed our report. So then faith, come, say this out loud with me, you all know it. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You see, you didn't even get faith in the word of God until the word of God was spoken to you. Then you got it. Though I've had people call our ministry and say, you know, we, we got right with God, we started going to church. We didn't know what Bible to get. All of a sudden, we just, we started hearing a King James Bible. King James, so we read a King James Bible, and we didn't know anything, but it just sounded like the Word of God. You know what that was? That was the Spirit of God in them saying, don't get an NIV. Don't put your trust in that. They'll change it in five years, they'll change it. And they did. Now, fiery darts. Satan is a fiery flying serpent. He's a dragon. He's a serpent. Spirits are made of fire. The Bible says that he has made his spirits a flaming fire. Their substance, the thing that they are made of is a spiritual. And when I say spiritual, I mean a real spirit fire that we have not seen, cannot comprehend, but it's more intense than earthly fire is. It's a spiritual fire, substance. I can't, I can't even explain fire to you. I just know it's there. Can you explain fire to me scientifically in any way that anybody can understand? We just know it's hot, lights up. It's there, looks cool. We stare at it for hours, okay? But every light in this building is a fire. Every light, every candle, everything's fire, fire's light and heat. The devil is a fiery flying serpent. The darts that he throws are not physical darts. They are spiritual ones. And I mean in the real sense, hitting you, attacking you in your soul and in your spirit. Fiery darts include but are not limited to false beliefs. The devil has deceived so many billions of people in this present where there are over 7 billion people alive on this planet. How many of them are deceived by Satan right this minute into false religions? Almost all of them, almost all of them are deceived by some religious false idea that does not match with every word that's in this book. False doctrine. False doctrine is a fiery dart. I've had people come in and out over false doctrine. They got, I tried to lead them to the Lord. Somebody got them. I mean, got them quick. I saw a family come in, boom, through our daycare ministry. That's what we'd hope. We'd have a family come in, get saved through the daycare. We finally had this family. The night I baptized them, they had two of their wacky, charismatic friends in with them, family members. And they yanked them out of this church in a matter of two weeks. I never saw them again after that. Two weeks time is all it took. Two weeks time. Filling them full of, well, you got to proclaim this and you got to name this and you got to, you don't have enough, if you don't have enough faith, you do, you can't, you can't be rich and you, you can't ever be sick. If you're ever sick, it's obviously you're not saved. Fill them with that kind of garbage. False doctrine. That was a fiery dart. And you know what they did not have? Doubt. Now, who's ever doubted the Bible? I've told you that story. Sat with my wife, bawled my eyes out one day, holding the Bible in my hand and said, look, you got to tell me this is true. She said, you know it is.
And if it hadn't been for a shield to fight off what was going on that day, I wouldn't have made it. I would not have made it. Not sure of the inerrancy of the Bible, meaning that when you read this Bible, there, there cannot be a word wrong in it or it's not of God. God cannot lie. He cannot be wrong. He cannot make a mistake. He cannot say something and have it misrepresented. Not the real God. Everything that he says in this book is right and it's true. And I will spend, I have spent and will spend every day of my life for the rest of my life trying to convince as many people as I can read this book and believe every word in it. Fear. Fear is a big one with me, especially. You can scare me to death. You can scare me. You can hold my family hostage. You can scare me with that. You can scare me with some, some bad things going to happen in our church. Some bad things going to happen to my family. Some bad things going to happen to my wife with me. I mean, you can scare me to death with things. Literally. If I didn't have this Bible to go back to and turn back to and know that God's compassed me. And God says, Mike, don't let that, don't let that scare you. Mike, don't let that worry you. Mike, don't worry about that. Mike, don't think about that. Mike, trust me. If I didn't have this book to go to, I, I would be, I've lost my mind already. Lust. Lust is a fiery dart, isn't it? Burns. Doesn't it? I'm not going to remember. I'm not even going to mention what kind of lust. Every one of them. Every one of them is a fiery dart to get you out of your Bible. To get you to crawl out of it. To get you to walk away from it. Because you're either going to yield. Listen to me. You're either going to yield your members to unrighteousness. There, there is going to come a day when it's going to all come down on the line with you. You are either going to say, I'm going to yield my members of my body over to unrighteousness and live in sin and rebellion and enjoy the sin or I'm going to beg God to get me out of that and yield my members over to sacrifice and let God kill them off so he can save me. But you cannot have both. And I promise you, your pastor is telling you, there will, if it hasn't happened already, there will come a day to you when God's going to force you to choose. He's going to lay you out and say, now you got the devil telling you you can have it all. Or I'm telling you, we're gonna, I'm going to beat you. And <laughs> I'm going to beat you until you start living for me. I hope you choose the beatings. Because the beatings will increase your faith. You will trust God after that. I promise you, you will. But lust is a fiery dart. And he's just throwing them. Air, study arrows, darts, spears in the Bible. Pride. Pride's a big one, especially in this country. Pride is a huge, fiery dart. The devil shoots at you. Remember, what I, remember when I ask you, what, tell me what is it you don't believe in. And I guarantee you the devil's going to manifest that in front of your eyes one of these days. Whatever it is you don't believe in. I don't believe in them UFOs. You're, I guarantee you one's going to land in your yard. I don't believe in ghosts. Ask some people in this church if they don't think there's a ghost somewhere in this place. I've never seen it. They say they have. I'm telling you, whatever, whatever, you say, well, I just don't believe in that stuff. Whatever it is, if it's in the Bible... I guarantee you the devil's going to pop one right in front of you. And if you don't believe this book, you're going to say, well, if that's true, then this can't be. 
I'm out. And that's what I'm telling you. The setup is not going to just be in one little thing, like with the ghost people or the UFO people or the New Age people or the Hindu people or whatever. It's going to hit all of them all at once. It's a grand delusion. It's a thing that you ain't got figured out yet. You'll never... The, the Bible said that Satan is wiser than Daniel. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. He has got a trick up his sleeve that he has not... We don't even know what it is yet. And if you don't believe and trust this book, boom. And pride will usually cause you to not trust this book. So you know what God has to do? He's got to break you. And I mean break you hard. Just leave you a crumpled mess and say, now, I can rebuild you if you'll let me. Raise your hand if that's happened to you already. Oh, there's still hope. There's still hope. You look around you. It's already happened to these people. God has broken them severely to where they didn't have a choice but to say, okay, God, I'll do whatever you say. But pride will cost you that. Covetousness. We have the highest standard of living in this country. Are we covetous? You bet we are. Very covetous. Jealousy. Lying signs, false gifts, false miracles. Gifts. I cannot even touch the hem of the garment of this. Of what, of what fiery darts are. And they are different with everybody. But I guarantee you the devil knows which ones to throw at you. Doesn't he? What else could I mention here? Somebody help me out. Help me preach this morning. What are some other fiery darts that I have not mentioned? Uh, your health. Sure it is. Sure it is. Money. Love of money is the root of all evil, is it not? Yes. What do you say? Your mental state. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm telling you, I would have gone crazy. I would have had a nervous breakdown by now. Had it not been for God helping me. The past. How many of you got your past chasing you every now and then? Listen, if you go to Bethel Church, your past is chasing you down hard. Those are the fiery darts. That's why you need to be shielded. Because none of these do you have any power over them. Brian, you got offered drugs a few years ago. And you just said... I can't turn it down. Roy got offered a bottle, what, when he was 13, 14, 12, something like that. Been in a bottle for years, couldn't turn it down. You cannot, you cannot expect to win this in the flesh. You, you cannot do it. You must trust this book. And do you know what it takes? Somebody answer the question now, and I'll give you a prize. I don't know what it is yet. What does it take to start trusting this book? Read it. Read it. If you don't read it, you won't trust it, because you don't know what's in it. You don't know everything that's in this book. Wouldn't it be something? Now, because I brought up that blood moon thing for a reason. Because I asked that question to myself last night. He did not say a red moon. He said it will be turned to blood. What if 
there's something in this Bible that we have yet to find out that will tell us why the moon turns to blood. That's the kind of question. I don't ask, sometimes I don't ask God what. I ask him, why? Why did he say blood and not red? Why did he say that? Why, ask God the question, why? And believe that the answers are in here. What if it is? I believe it is. I don't know it. That irritates me. But I'm going to search it out. And I'm not going to start, start, stop looking until I find it. And then I'm going to share it with everybody. And then all of us, on the day the moon turns to blood, we will go, this is that which was spoken by the prophet saying, boom, just like Peter did at Pentecost. We will say, this is that which was spoken. Devil, you're not going to get me with this because I already know the Bible and I know what it says. I got to shut up. Let's bow our heads. I'm not near done, but I promised God I would stop when I ran out of stuff to say and I run out of stuff to say. Take a look up here real quick at this list again. Find your darts. Where are they? They're on here somewhere. There's other things in the Bible I didn't get to. But this encompasses a lot of it. And the devil is going to throw them. From here to that day, he's going to throw them. He's going to get you to either walk away from your Bible or he will try to destroy you. Don't walk away from your Bible. You need that shield of faith. Father, I love you. And I think, Father, this I needed this. I needed to be reminded of what you taught me, what you showed me, what you trained me. What you did with me. How you did it. You, you made me believe this book. You made me trust you. And I did not want to do that. You did it again. You did it again after that. And you did it again after that. And you will keep doing it. My flesh wants to run, wants to hide, wants to be like David, wants to cover everything up. I had to learn to trust you. And you've confronted me many times over that issue alone. Mike, do you trust me? And I found out I didn't. Father, if our, if our heavenly salvation is based on faith, then any physical salvation will also be based on that same faith. Teach us that faith. Teach us how to do that. Train us. Run us through, God. Show us a little bit about what's coming. Take each one of us in our own way, whatever anybody's interested in, and God show them some great and mighty thing that they never knew that was in the Bible. Show it to them. Do it one time, God. Do it one time this week. Show them one thing that they never knew was in the Bible. And open their eyes and tell them, I got lots of treasures like this in this book. Do in them, God, what you did with me. Make me understand that Everything that I've ever wondered after is in this one book only. Teach us to read it. Teach us to abide by it. To think on it. Meditate on it. Pray over it. 
speak them back to you, Father, for confirmation. God, are you going to do this? God, is this for me? Just reaffirm. Give us a Bible, faith, shield revival in our souls where we just trust you all over again like we had never done it before. Do that with everybody that hears me today, wherever they are. Give them a Bible, faith, revival in their souls. Show them one thing this week that blows their mind and make them come back for more. And then all these things that they worry about, the devil's going to throw at them, they won't have to worry about them anymore because they'll know they're protected. Father, bless this word today. Bless these people. I love them. Thank you for letting them love me and putting up with me and my nonsense sometimes. Thank you, God, for Bethel Church. We love you. We ask your grace now and dismiss us in your care. In Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. How about you stand up?